So today we're going to do a pin jointed framework TQ experiment um, using the rig that you can see top left hand corner of your screen. Um, I'm just going to go through a bit of the anatomy of the test rig before we start. So the truss is made up of members and joints held together. Um, the members are what we are measuring the strain of using these little wires, you just about see them on your screen. Um, we have two supports, so we've got a ro roller support one side and then a pin support the other side. We've then got this contraption in the middle, which applies load using a screw onto the truss. Uh, what you can't quite see on your screen is this box, you just see the bottom of it here, which is a digital representation of the load in newtons that you're putting onto the truss. Um, but you'll be able to see a representation of that on your screen, so it's, it's no worries. So once you've got your USB license put in place, you'll be able to open the TQ Structures uh, software. We're then going to pin jointed frameworks. So you'll notice that this looks a little bit different to the setup that we have here. Um, we can change that by going to the toolbox drop down and selecting roof truss, which now looks a bit more familiar. Um, today we are varying the load, so select property being varied, variable lower load is the one that we want in here. We can then go to run and connect our computer to the test rig. This warning is basically saying that you need to make sure that each of the members on here are associated with the correct member on the actual test rig. Um, so we'll go through that process in a moment. Um, and then the next part is over here, we've got a representation of the diameter of the members. Um, so using what's called a vernier, I'll just hold that up so you can see it. And there's a couple of little options, all you need to really know is on, and then once it's fully closed, we zero it, and it can show you small increments of measurement. So what we do is we take a measurement of two of the members and take an average, so that first one I've got 6.1. It would help if I did zero. There we go. It's going to be a little bit fiddly, but it's, it's not too much of a worry. And 6.08. So averaged out 6.09. So I will just update that. And bearing in mind that this number can only be between 5.9 and 6.1. If you're measuring above 6.1 or below 5.9, um, just give yourself another two members um, and make sure that you've got that vernier properly zeroed and everything like that. So we're pretty much ready here. What I will now do is um, set up to connect the members to the correct number. Um, so I'll just show you the guide that we have to help that be a bit smoother. So here you have the PDF guides that will also be available to you. Um, you can just about see the, the tray that this is resting on is grey. We also have another truss which is on a blue frame. So down here, which you can see hopefully, zoom in. Um, these are basically the members that we need to attach to these members um, in order to for the frame and the computer to correlate to the same thing. So all we do to change that is we click the drop down. So click on the square here and it produces a drop down which you can then select the correct member number. Um, so AG is number seven, AH number three and etc. So I'll just go through and add those in now for you. So you should be able to see now that all of our members have the correct input number from the frame. So the computer, when I highlight, say for example, this frame, uh, this part of the frame, sorry, uh, member AG, it's now correlating to the correct member here, member seven. Um, so this um, PDF will also be available to you to make sure that all of this is tallied up depending on which screen you're on. Um, so that shows us, you know, if I'm interested in looking at this one, we can highlight it um, and it just makes it a bit easier to see what we're doing. So before we start, um, what you can also see, now we're connected, um, connected via USB, that means that these numbers are giving us a live feed. So if I change, for example, and you can see my hand just turning the screw, 
this, the force goes up, and that's a more precise force there, and the actual force and measured strain changes according to how much force I'm putting on. So I will just put that down to zero. Just means that we've got, um, that's actually quite good, <laughs> down to 0 0.1. If it's there or thereabouts, that's fine. Um, so now we've got our live feed and we're down to zero. I'm just going to go to tools, zero the strain gauge, yes, and then tools, zero the force. So you want to try and make sure that your force is as close to zero before you officially zero it, just to make sure you've got room in the screw to go all the way up to 500. So commonly, you will be asked to go up in 100 newton increments from zero to 500 and then back down again. Um, so that's what I'm going to show you today. If your lecturer or the experiment you're doing requires different, that's not a problem. Um, but please do not go over 500 newtons um, before otherwise things start to get to the point where they potentially break so um, please don't go above 500 um, to make sure that everything stays nice and safe um, so what we then do is we measure the data at zero newtons by going to data record data to table or f10 and we'll have a little pop-up open there so every time we save data another row will be added um, for the load displacement the strain in each of the members so i'm now going to go clockwise increasing until we get to around 100 newtons like i said it can be a little bit fiddly but we'll go there or thereabouts uh, and then once again data record to table so you can see just another row has been added so i'm going to go on there and just do 100 newton increments up to 500. So I've now got my first six numbers here, 0, 100, all the way up to 500. Um, and just to give you a bit of a background as to what these numbers actually represent. So at the moment, for example, we've got 497 newtons load on here. Um, all of the members that have a negative shows that that member is in compression so for example this one ae which is this member here is in compression it means that it's trying to be squished so it's in being compressed um, so it's trying to get shorter under the load that we've put on the truss here um, the ones that are showing are positive so for example uh, bf this one here which is this one is in tension so that is trying to get longer and you can see that by the positive force that's being applied to it so that one's trying to stretch and that one's trying to get smaller so compression and tension you'll also see that there are some that actually have got really not very much going on um, which shows that those members are actually not being used so for example this one has got really no nothing going through it neither is this one so the forces are being transferred between some of them at fairly hefty rates and fairly hefty forces and some are actually not carrying any at all um, so once i've done up to my 500 i'm then going to go back down so going anti-clockwise oh yeah it's a bit stiff so back down to 400 doing the same thing so data record table um, and then I'm just going to continue that back down to zero. So if I now just swap these round, so you can see the full table. So this is basically our complete set of data. So we have all of our loads from zero up to 500 and back down again, um, showing the strain up here and the force down here in each of the members. So when I'm ready, and I've done all of that, I can save it. So using this button up at the top, I can save that. And this software likes to save test data. So the software likes to save the data in an internet format. So when it opens, it opens in Google Chrome or Edge or, or whatever it is that you're using. To make it a bit more user friendly, I just copy that. I open a blank spreadsheet and I copy it into my spreadsheet 
in Excel. Um, that then means that it's a lot more user friendly. You can do things, you know, make your graphs and assess the data and analyze the data a lot easier. Um, so yeah, and that is how you complete the TQ trust frames.